So, so far to date, we've worked with 11 different castable resins. And this stuff is a bit of a paradox. But before I get into any of these adjectives um, and descriptions, let me just say that this resin is actually a pleasure to work with. I really like it. Uh, I like a lot of the aspects, but it's also a, a paradox. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. To start, this stuff is called Apply Labs Cyan or Castable Cyan. And it is by far one of the most affordable castable resins that we have ever tried. It also comes in one of the largest bottles, a full one liter. I mean, others do carry one liter, just that that's their standard, that's their only bottle size. It's interesting. They had some very specific instructions in their um, you know, quick start guide. For example, it needs to be heated. So you need to be able to warm this resin. And this is like literally my only quip about this resin so far, is that the bottle is so tall, it didn't fit inside my CW1. The CW1 has a, pr a resin preheat setting. Basically, I can um, put a bottle in and it will just spin and the little heating fan will warm the bottle for as long as I want. Um, anyway, so the bottle was so tall, it didn't fit in my CW1. That was a little annoying, but that's like literally it. I found another way of doing it with, uh, with hot water in a, in a glass thing. Anyway, so this thing, this resin has very specific requirements. It does need to be heated. The target temp temperature is, I think, 35 degrees Celsius. This resin also has very specific wash requirements. For me, with the CW1, I, I just take my little system. I take the print bed, put it on the lid, put it into the IPA, run the program. There's a stirrer and it agitates it. It washes really well. Um, but this stuff is only supposed to be submerged for, or not even, it's never supposed to be submerged. You're supposed to use just like a paintbrush and just like a little thing of IPA and, uh, and go from there. Um, I followed that as best I could. Basically, I kind of like dunked it for a second, I dunked it again, uh, flipped it over to the same, checked, and remarkably, it was very, very clean already. It's not like it's a difficult process, it's just a different process. After the washing, uh, I had to get the models off of the print bed. And that was a very interesting thing. Uh, I've never had build plate adhesion problems with any resin. Um, my The Prusa SL1, I don't know what they've done with it, but something about their build plate is just sticky. And nothing falls off of it. The surface of the build plate has been sandblasted from Prusa, as that's the way I got it. I think even if my build plate was made out of glass, um, you know, as smooth as it could get, this stuff would have stuck because when I tried to take it off, it wasn't so much a matter of getting the scraper under the model as much as chipping away at it almost. <laughs> I had chunks coming off of the, of the, of the, the models, the base plates. Uh, this, this resin is very brittle, but at the same time, it's very soft. It's very hard to describe. Like there's definitely some flex here, but when I go to take off this, this support, Like it's so, this is a typical feature of brittle resins where it just kind of cracks. You know, the, the smallest point is usually with the Prusa anyway, you can manage the taper of your supports. So in this case, I have a fairly long taper. It goes to a, like a pinpoint and that being the weakest point, it just snaps off. Uh, you can see that was a very clean break. Uh, I've got very, very few bumps. But at the same time, like this resin is so, it's flexible. Now, I mean, it does have a breaking point. It'll break eventually. It won't just like flop right over, but it, it's, it's, a, it's a hybrid. It's, a, it's an anomaly. It's very odd. And the best part is that all of these things are great. <laughs> I love this. Um, I've got other models here. You know, this one's been supported very minimally because it's very thin. Um, but you can see here along the bottom, where it's supporting the base, there is not any sagging. Like there's, it's just a complete straight line with the supports going up to it. There's no, there's none of that little warpage right in between the supports. So this will just break right off. And I almost feel like I don't, I mean, you, you can see some little tiny pock marks there. 
but nothing that you know a one couple a couple of passes with 600 grit sandpaper wouldn't take care of in the resin stage and that's nothing to take care of in the metal stage so yeah this resin is very very interesting i am very surprised um i don't really get surprised too often because it feels like these resins are almost just kind of like packaged under a different name sometimes but they're all the same stuff ultimately but that's not the case here this is a very interesting product i like it a lot um these settings i ran at i think it was 10 seconds a layer and the initial base layer was 40 seconds the website the the apply labs website does not have specific profiles that i saw anyway for all the different resins or well at least in the case of the castable they didn't have a, a list of settings for all the resins however they did have um they basically tested all of these just on frozen products um so like the frozen mini 4k uh the frozen mini the i think the shuffle and the tr was it the transform there's another one anyway being that the Prusa SL1 is an older printer, I went with some of the, um, one of the older print settings. So I did 40 second base layer at 0.05 mil uh, for 12 seconds per layer. That seems like a very normal print setting, honestly. I mean, some of the newer printers, yes, they have incredibly powerful light sources. They have some kind of upgraded light source where their, their exposure times are like two seconds. Um, that would be, um, that's more DLP territory, honestly, than LCD, but that's amazing. Uh, so anyway, I went with an older build profile and I feel like I could actually dial it back. This stuff is so hard and it's printed so well that I might actually dial it back a little bit so that we can focus on faster print times. That's not something I often say is that the profile was too good. Dial it back. Oh God. I also did some test prints in 0.025 millimeter and they were phenomenal as well. This is 0.05 and I can't see the layer lines aside from on the tops, you know, on the tops of curves where you can see the stepping. But even then it's like totally, man, it's, it's very manageable. So 0.025, I can show you some close-ups, is just perfect. So overall, the printing with Apply Labs Castable Cyan is a joy. I love this resin so far for the printing. So let's hope that it lives up to its castability. That's one of the things. I'm, I'm cautiously draw, cautiously happy because if this stuff doesn't cast well, well, that's too bad because it prints so nice. Let's get these sprued up and we're going to be casting these in bronze over the weekend. Bronze, uh, I specifically use silicon bronze. Uh, I've cast with it a lot. So it is not a, uh, a new metal to me. I know how to get a good cast out of it. No porosity or anything. So let's hope that this casts well. And I will show you guys that result up next. 2,000 years later. So since we uh, talked about the printing of the Apply Labs resin, we have done the cast and it turned out really, really well. I am very pleased with the overall result. Um, just to kind of give you my initial impressions, um, it's awesome, <laughs> I love it. Uh, like I was saying before, this resin's a little bit odd, but it's a delight nonetheless. Um, the surface of the resin prints are nice and dry. In other words, they didn't collect any dust or anything. I did keep them in bags, but you know, just as you're working, sometimes things can get stuck to them. Uh, there was none of that in this, so that's great to see. These casts turned out really, really well. I cast these in silicon bronze. This is a, a material that I'm very familiar with. There is absolutely no surface texture on them that wasn't already there in the print. A little bit of like, you know, from the from supports and stuff, but that's totally normal. There is no sign of thermal expansion whatsoever. No flashing. Um, everything is exactly dimensionally as it should be. I actually have a uh, the print version and the cast version here, and they are the exact same size in every possible way. So shrinkage, not a big deal. However, that will vary between metals, so bear that in mind. It's not going to be a rule. And it really doesn't have too much to do with the resin itself. But at least it's something you don't have to worry too much about. So where would I rank this resin on our overall list compared to all the other resins that we've tried? Uh, to date, we have tried nine resins. I believe this is number 
10, and we still have two more on the way, I think. Um, we have a resin rank list, which is available to our YouTube members, which kind of breaks down how all of these resins perform. I would rank this resin very highly. Um, I'm actually gonna tie it with Power Resin Zero. And even though it doesn't quite print as flawlessly as those, those resins, at a third the price, you cannot go wrong. It, there, this stuff is currently at an introductory price of, I believe, $100 US for a full one liter bottle. Uh, the others are three times that cost and with comparable results in terms of the casting and the printing. So whether or not you're in the budget category or the more pro category, depending on what kind of printer you have and what kind of outcome you're expecting, I would recommend this to both, honestly, because it performs so well and we're kind of right in the middle ground of these two categories. The fact that you can get it cheaply for those who are hobby level and the burnout schedule, you can send this off to be done easily. If you're pro and you're doing it more your own stuff, you can get it cheaply and in large quantities. And the overall performance is very comparable to some of the more expensive resins. So thank you very much for watching. That is all I have to say about this particular resin. If you wanna see how this resin stacks up with all the others that we've tried, uh, we have plenty of videos that you can check out, or you can subscribe to our YouTube membership where we have all of this in that ranked list. And if you need any help with any of those resins, feel free to reach out and we will of course help you. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I will see you guys in the next video. <laughs> if you're on the more high end and you have say like a Solus or um, I don't even know what high end printers are anymore.